at 1030. And if we need to, we'll do a we'll do another service. If we if if you don't feel safe, if you don't feel uh, comfortable, then we'll do another service for another group of people. If we need to do that, we'll do whatever we need to do to make you feel safe. You're doing a really good job this morning, and I wanted to. I just want to thank you for that and uh, 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 lift that lift that up before you, because we are the ones that will determine where we can keep getting. But as long as we social distance and do some things uh, that we need to do, then we feel like we are trusting and obeying God, and we're trusting we're obeying our our uh, leaders of our land too. And you can do both, and I believe that God will honor that, and that the Lord will keep us safe. And uh, so I'll say a little bit more about that just a little bit right before we. I love I love the uh, the new songs. Uh, written and I love the old song don't you? Yeah. I love the hymnal the red back is a hymnal they told me now the green back is a hermnal hermnal or something like that but the guy, I love to talk to that guy and see how you say that you know. Whatever. hey you know one thing I'd like to start next week if we could and we'll figure out a way we'll go back and get some Kentucky Fried Chicken buckets or something and we'll put some gloves on uh, uh, Kevin and whoever I'd like to start the offering back giving in the service and put buckets out here and, and let you come and give. How many of you would like that? Kind of miss yeah, that. Yeah. You. <laughs> and uh, so uh, I, I, I saw do that this morning. I said, well, I'll wait uh, to get saved. But uh, uh, I know you want to give. And I believe that would be a good way to do it. But just think a little bit. Phil's going to sing this song for us. I, when I grew up in the church, this is what church was on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. They all were kind of three services, just about the same. Anybody want to sing in the choir? Everybody want to sing the choir? Come forward. Then you got the choir, okay, who's going to lead the choir? And then they said, what number y'all going to sing? And the lady that every Sunday morning, she requests the same song. Okay, if you didn't say something real quick, she's going to sing victory in Jesus no matter what. <laughs> And then we had this uh, brother Harden. If my mom's watching this morning, she did. His name was QT. QT, actually, if he's looking at like I'm looking, he'd be looking over here because his eyes were crossed. I had to ride with him a couple times down the road. Let me tell you, it ain't good. <laughs> he's looking at you. <laughs> yeah, and he had a little speech impediment. And he loved that song, He Set Me Free, and I believe that's paid two twenty five. That's the way he said it, 225. So, and we knew if QT led the choir, he was going to sing 225. And then, after the choir went down and the report was given of how many was there for Sunday school and how much offerings come in, I, they used to, anybody want to sing this morning? And they, I remember this lady, uh, I, I think the Lord would come. Sister, you going to say, no, I don't want to sing. Well, come on up and sing. Anyway. I don't feel like singing. Come on up and sing. No, we want you to sing. Everybody goes, oh, come on up and sing. Finally, after, y'all know, know who I'm talking about. Persuasion, she come up and sing. You know, it, well, you didn't know. I was going to tell you the singers, we practiced the other night. Lindsay knew she was going to sing this morning. In the old church I grew up, you come in, they say, you want to sing or not, Brother Calvin? Come on up, Brother Allen, and sing one for us. And on your way up there, you have to determine what you were going to sing. Were any of you a part of that church? Yeah. Now, that might not have been the best way of doing things or whatever. But I will tell you, I've been in those church services where the glory of the Lord filled the house. And people were saved, and they were delivered, and they were set free. Amen. You know why? Because that was the best that we could do. When you give God your best, God's going to give you His best. His grace that He can pour out on you. When we sing them old songs, and I like some of the old songs. If you've been watching us the last two weeks, you'll know that we like some of the old songs. How many of you know that the God on the mountain is still God in the back? How many of you know that the God, when everybody's healthy, is still the same God when there's a pandemic or whatever is going on? That God doesn't change. Life may be easy. When you're down, when you're up on the mountain. But things will change. And you'll be in the valley. Did you know that? But the God on the mountain is the God of the valley. Somebody ought to shout a hallelujah because you're in the valley. But God's in the valley. Life is easy when you're up on the mountain. And you've got
Sister uh, Kay watching us, and Kay is going to be having 
uh, bypass surgery, and I believe that's next week, week after this. This coming Thursday. This coming Thursday. Thank you, Donna, for that. This coming Thursday, uh, she'll be having a bypass. I want you to pray for her. And Brother Tony Crow is watching us. Sister Pam, Sister Sue Quarter, Sister Linda Wright, uh, Sister Sylvia, Marquita is watching us this morning. Brother Tommy Tucker is faithful to watch. And uh, God is so good. We've got about 52 devices uh, on, online. There are watching some people that we are meeting online, and I thank God for that. And uh, we have people that watch us from Arkansas and different places. We thank the Lord for that. And I just, uh, Dean is, Brother Dean is watching this morning. Their family has COVID. Uh, Dean and Judy and Anthony and all their family, Sister Betty Lou, this morning. And uh, we, we try to keep you updated with where we're at and what's going on. Let me uh, just uh, address a couple of things right before we get into Isaiah chapter 41, and you're going to be turning there. Uh, there are a lot of things that are, in case you didn't know, there are a lot of things that are going on in our world right now. And uh, there are uh, the dominant people. I, I thought there was a thing, I thought there was a law in America against monopolies. Apparently, Congress sheltered Amazon and Google and Facebook and uh, Twitter from those laws and uh, that have monopolized, monopolized social media. People think that's all there is out there, uh, but there's not. Uh, and if I were you, I'd be looking at some alternatives for my social media. If Facebook was to take us down, if they were to censor us or to not allow us to be on anymore, at 10.30 that Sunday, we'll be here with a full house, and we'll let you know where we're going from there. We're going to look at other uh, means of making sure that we can get into your home, you that are watching us. We're going to let you know what that is, if we have to do go back to a live stream or something like that. Because obviously this week, and I'm going to say this very respectful, I'm not here to cast judgment. But when in America, amendment, the Constitution says there is a right to the freedom of speech. Amen. That's good, bad, ugly, mean, or whatever. Mm -hmm. If you ever, if we lose that, we're going to be going down the path that Germany went down yeah. Yeah. Uh, many years ago. And right now, social media and news networks are censoring and filtering what they're doing. The same thing that Hitler did in Germany when he took control of the newspapers and the media that was out there. So you need to know that there are other things out there such as parlor. Some of us are on P-A-R-L-E-R. -E parlor, you can find us there. Uh, uh, we took our Twitter, I've had a Twitter account since 2017 and uh, not particularly because of what they did to the president, but because they did it to whoever. That's the issue, is that all of a sudden that you can say, we're not going to allow this voice, and we're not going to allow that voice. This is America. What has made America great ever since was you could believe this, you could, you could debate this side, I could debate that side, and we could be friends. That's no longer true in America. If you're on an opposing side, uh, from whoever, okay, and uh, it is, and, and, and this situation has divided families, it's divided churches, it's dividing people right now, and it's doing what the enemy got a hold of it and made it to do. Instead of this stuff driving us further apart, it should drive us closer together, okay? So we are going to be looking and exploring different ways to make sure uh, that we can, uh, and whatever we find out, whatever we find out, well, I'll pass to you, and then if, if, if I do something and you don't, that's okay. The Bible says you've got to work out your own salvation. That's between you and God. So if I take, if, if I delete my Amazon account, 
if I, you know, don't you like getting those boxes that smiley air on it and makes you feel good, the UPS man stops at your house. And, you know, sometimes I just order something just to get the truck to stop. You know, <laughs> I, you know it, it, isn't that amazing, you know? But if I, if I decide I don't want to be a part of that anymore, or I don't want to be a part of Google anymore, is it possible to get by without Google? It sure is. Amen. Google is a search engine. You don't have to use it. You can use DuckDuckGo. You can use, there are several things out there. Uh, my the Google with your Gmail, there are things out there, other, and I'm researching other G, other mail right now, uh, because one thing that you got to know this, they, they, they are in your life. They look at your mail. They look at what you do on Facebook, okay? They know all about you. And I, I really don't like that. Do you? I really don't like so, but there are other things out there. Like I said, if I decide to go back to a flip phone and get rid of Apple and get rid of uh, Google and get rid of Amazon and and uh, go so that don't mean you have to, okay? And that don't mean you're not. Is that all right? You and I have to be enemies. Is that, is that all right? It, it, I just want to say that to you this morning, uh, but. I, I believe if, if say this in the right way, it's not been, it's fixing to get bad, really bad. If you love freedom and you value your freedom, it's, you ain't, you haven't seen anything yet. And you know, but you know what? You and I need to thank God for the freedom we have. Go live in communist China for the last 50 years. Or go live in Japan after the war. We, we, we've not known. But you know what? In all those countries, here's what I want to tell you. That's when the gospel grows the most. That's right. And they may shut down churches. And they may shut down websites. But they'll never stop the gospel of the Lord right. Jesus. Amen. They'll never stop people from being saved. As a matter of fact, the church may grow more at home than it's grown in the house. Okay? That's the book of Acts. Okay? But I'm going to assure you this morning, I'm going to preach, and we're going to go home in here in a few minutes, that God, no, God was not surprised at what happened on Wednesday or November or today. He is in control. Those songs said he got the whole world in his hand. Hallelujah. And if you believe that, why don't you stand and give him a praise? Just let God know you're going to be faithful to him. You're going to be faithful to him. No matter what goes on, you're going to love him. And I look around and I, I didn't know if 30, just remain standing, I'm going to read scripture. I didn't know if 30 people would be here this morning uh, or not. I, I, I really didn't know. 30 or 40 people or whatever. And there's almost a house full of people. And I'm thanking God for that. Some of you know we that Josh and Katrina have moved on. We've had others that have moved on during the last year. But you know what? God sent you. God sent uh, a Frank and Diane. Or God sent Aaron and Kristen. And some of you, Shelva. Some of you that weren't here in, in January. You're here today. And guess what? I, I'm believing and trusting God that some, there comes a time sometimes when people have to, have to move on. And, and we're great friends, and Joshua and Trinity are going to come back. We're going to honor them. 13 years at this church, they, they were always doing something. Youth pastors, children's pastors, they were always doing something, okay? And we're going to be addressing that with the leadership. But you know what? God has been faithful, and you're here, and i got to get my Bible. <laughs> Unless you want me to quote Isaiah 43, 1. Through 29. <laughs> Coastlands, listen to me in silence. And let the peoples gain new strength. Let them come forward. Then let them speak. Let us come together for judgment. Who has aroused one from the east? Whom he calls in righteousness to his feet. He delivers up nations before him and subdues kings. This one from the east does. He makes them like dust with his sword and the wind driven and chaff with his bow. He pursues them, passing on his safety. By a way he had not been, traversing with his feet. 
Who has accomplished or performed it? Calling forth generations from the beginning. God knows all things. I, the Lord, I, the Lord, am the first and I'll be with the last. Yeah. <laughs> I am He. Isn't that good? Yeah. God is still in there. This one coming from the east, I call him from the beginning. I call him by name and I am ordering his steps. He's saying to the coastlands, the islands around the nation of Israel, the coastlands have seen, they're afraid. The ends of the earth tremble. They have grown near and have, and have come. Each one helps his neighbor. And he says to his brother, be strong. Okay? And this is what they do. The craftsman encourages the smelter. And he who smooths metal with a hammer encourages him who beats the anvil, saying of the soldering, it is good. And he fastens it with nails so that it will not totter. You know what he's talking about? When the people see, they have, instead of turning to God, they turn to idols. And they made idols for one another. To get through the crisis that was coming. But you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, he's calling both nations, Israel, remember Israel means deception. You see, Jacob means deception. Whom I have chosen, descendant of Abraham, my friend. You whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called you from the remotest parts and said to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you and not rejected you. Now listen to this. Do not fear, for I am with you. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you know I am is with us? Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to let you say, but I want to read this chapter. I'm going to seek, seek this church in the Word of God. Sometimes we read little scriptures. We should do more scriptures than we do anything. Amen. Too, too much just a little here and a little there. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. How many of you believe that this morning? Hallelujah. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Behold, all those who are angered at you will be shamed and dishonored. Those who contend with you will be as nothing and will perish. You will seek those who quarrel with you, but you will not find them. Those who war with you will be as nothing and none existent. For I am the Lord your God. You think he's trying to say something to the nation of Israel here? You think he's trying to remind them like he's reminded us? I am the Lord, your God, who upholds your right hand, who says to you, again, do not fear. I'm going to help you. Do not fear. Worm, Jacob. God's called him a worm. He's going to show you that analogy in a minute. You men of Israel, you're like a worm. But I will help you, declares the Lord. And your Redeemer is the only one of Israel. Here's what I'm going to do. Behold, I will make you new. What were they? A worm? But he's going to make them new. What's he going to make? I'm going to make you to be a sharp threshing sledge with double edges. And you will thresh the mountains and pulverize them. And will make the hills like chaff. You will winnow them, winnow them, and the wind will carry them away, and the storm will scatter them. But you will rejoice in the Lord. You will glory in the Holy One of Israel. God's fixing to do something to that worm. The afflicted and the needy are seeking water, but there is none. Their tongue is parched with thirst. I, the Lord, will answer them. I want you to know this. 
that God's heart is always with the marginalized, the needy, the less fortunate. Okay? Those that don't have that, God has a special heart for the poor, no matter who they are. I, the Lord, will answer them. As the God of Israel, I will not forsake them. Here's what I will do for the poor and needy. I will open rivers on the bare heights and springs in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land fountains of water. I will put the cedar in the wilderness and the acacia and the myrtle and the olive tree. I'll put that in the wilderness. I will place the juniper in the desert together with the box tree and the cypress that they may see and recognize and consider and gain insight as well that the hand of the Lord has done this. And the Holy One of Israel has created it. So he says to the idols, those who worship idols, the court, here it, present your case. All right, here you are. Stand up, present your case before the Lord. Give me your best argument, the King of Jacob says. All right, you say idols, show me the evidence. Let them bring forth and declare to us what is going to take place. But let the idols tell the future. And for the former events, declare what they were. That we may consider them and know their outcome. Or announce to us some, what is coming. Declare the things that are going to come afterward. That we may know that you are God. Indeed, do good or evil. You know what he's saying? Do something. That's what he's saying to the idols. You're supposed to be a God? Do something. Do it. Whether it's good or bad, do something. That we may anxiously look about us and fear together. Behold, you are of no account. That sounds like Ernest T. Bass. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you are of no account. And your work, he said this tonight, your work amounts to nothing. He and he who follows you chooses an abomination. Wow. I have aroused one from the north, and he has come. From the rising of the sun, he will call on my name. He will come upon rulers as upon mortar, even as the potter treads clay. He who has ordained this from the beginning, from when the beginning that we might know, or from the former times that we may see he is right. Surely there, there was no one who declared. The one did this. Surely there was no one who proclaimed. Surely there was no one who heard your words. Formerly I said to Zion, Behold, here they are to Jerusalem. I will give a messenger of good news. But when I looked, there was none. There was no counselor among them. Who, if I ask, can give an answer? Listen to this. Trust in, in anything but God, Jesus Christ. Here's what's going to happen. All of them are false. Yes. Everything outside the word of God and Jesus Christ is false. Yes. Yes. Amen. All the works that are going outside the kingdom of God is worthless. It ain't worth a dime. Amen. The molten images are wind and emptiness. The conclusion is this morning is that there is no one out there but God Amen. who will make any bit of difference in your life. Amen. Who is in control? Amen. Father, we love you. Thank you for these people. Bless them. And bless the word of the Lord this morning. And we thank you and we give you praise for your word today in Jesus' name. You may be seated. I'm going to go real quick this morning because I see it's already 1125. Who is in control of human events? Now this is, this is always a relevant question. And Isaiah chapter 41 helps to answer this question. Is there a point to or a direction in human history, or is human history just go, is it going as man determines it? What man wants it to happen? Is it just a random, meaningless combination of undirected events? Is it a cycle fated to repeat itself endlessly? Or is there a God in heaven who is directing human affairs? A God who is always moving to a final resolution, and a fulfillment of all things. Your answer to this question will determine how you feel about life. 
Now, I want to tell you, if I felt like everything was just random, everything we don't know what's going to be, I, I would have a lot of fear and trepidation on my life. But can I tell you, I believe there's a God that is saying, I am moving this earth toward a final day when I will be King of kings and I will be Lord of lords. I have given my word and I will not abandon my word. And one day this world and this earth will know that I am the Lord of glory, that I am the root. Hallelujah. I believe God wants us to know that he is in control. So I want you to follow me this morning out of Isaiah and I want to answer some questions for you or give you some statements. And so you first of all, fear not for God is with us. That's verses 1 through 16. The conclusion of that or that verse that we want to look at is verse 4. And he says in verse 4, who has performed and done it, calling the generations, all generations from the beginning. I am the Lord, I the Lord am the first, and I am with the last. What he is actually saying here, what he will be telling him, very quickly, very quick synopsis. Israel is in Babylonian captivity, okay? The Babylonians are the big, bad bullies of the world. And they have destroyed, they are destroying Jerusalem, they will destroy the temple, and they will lead God's people into bondage because God's people disobey. There's no hope for them, really. I mean, who can do anything with Nebuchadnezzar? But God says, I got a man on the way. I got a man that I'm raising up. Amen. 150 years in advance, God will give the name of the Persian ruler Cyrus who will say to the people of Israel, who will conquer Babylon and immediately say, hey, you want to go back home? I'm going to make a decree and let you go back. Can I tell you, Joe Biden is not in charge and neither is Donald Trump or anybody else in the world. There is a sovereign God that says, I am moving this earth. I am moving this land. I am the one that is in control. God's got people on the way. As a matter of fact, God's got people on the way, but one day God himself is going to show up. One of these days, he's going to come with the church. Amen. One of these days, he's going to come back with the church. Yes. I don't know why you came to church this morning, but I came to lift up the God who is in control. You quit your worry. You stop your fear. You quit looking around you. My God, we're going home one day. Heaven is our destination. The glory world is coming near to you and I. Somebody ought to give you praise. I want to say to you this morning, Verse 10. I'm going to see that in your spirit. Do not fear. Amen. I'm fighting fear. Yeah. You may have conquered. <coughs> bless you. Now I want to tell you, when you look around and you see everything going on, you have to fight against fear. Right. You have to let your faith rise up and defeat fear. Amen. Well, that, I, I ain't heard. I, I want to say this. I ain't heard a prophet yet that's right. I've heard one man over in Nashville. He, he's bound to be right. One of these times, he's prophesied so many things out there. One of these times, it's going to be right, I guess. Okay? Isn't it amazing that they will take credit for it? Nobody saw this. So why should I trust TBN, TBS, TBS, TV Land, Me TV, or a preacher or a prophet who who told me this is going to happen, it didn't happen. You think I'm going to keep going back? But I'm not going to live in fear. Because they might not know, but there is a God in heaven that said, don't you be afraid. And don't you worry none. Woo, glory to the Holy Ghost. You don't have to worry. And you don't have to fear. Amen. You don't have to fret over tomorrow. When you get up in the morning, there will be a God that sits in the circle of the earth and said, I got it, I got it, I got it. Oh, Somebody ought to give him praise. He says, don't fear. Do not fear. Why? For I am. I'm going to stop right there. I am. 
is with you. Yes. Remember that burning bush that Moses saw? Mm -hmm. And God said, I want you to go back down there where you kill that Egyptian. I want you to tell them that you're coming to be their deliverer. The murderer is going to be their deliverer. Okay? And Moses says to God, but the guy said, well, who am I going to say sent me? He couldn't know. He, he probably, he, 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 did you know Moses had a speech impediment? And he, 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 he probably said, said that God, who, 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 who? God said, you just tell him that I am sent you. Come on, 
but your shout's coming back. Some of you used to run a long time, but get ready, you fixing to run. You ain't smoking tongues in a long time, but I feel a tongue coming up. My God, I feel the glory of the Lord into the house. And somebody ought to praise him this morning. Or you don't have to. <laughs> Fear not, God is with us. Number two, is God's concern, special concern for the poor and the needy. Do not ever forget that God is their answer. And God is your answer for the provisions that you need in life. Sister Kim, God is our source. He's our food giver. He puts a shelter over our head and clothes on our back. How, are you not more worth more than the birds of the air out there? Are you not more valuable to God than the lilies of the field? But in a couple of months, we'll walk out and see them little yellow buttercups and they'll look so beautiful and great. I want to tell you, God cares for you more than the lilies that adorn the field, than the beautiful spook. Do you know how special you are in the eyes of God? You don't have to have money. You don't have to have, have a rich, fine home or drive a fine car or have a lot of things by your name. He loves you. He will provide for you. He will never forsake the cause of those who are in need. He performs special miracles for the poor and the needy. I like the way he says this. He opens up rivers and springs in the desert. Amen. Hallelujah. You ever been in a dry place? Boy. I want to tell you, I know a God that puts a river right. in the desert. Amen. Hallelujah. Even making the wilderness of our life, woo, all this good. Hallelujah. 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 The devil said, you're going to walk through a wilderness. You give me a wilderness, and God will give me a pool of water. That's right. Hallelujah. 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 You know what? The, Isaiah will tell the people eventually, when you walk through the fire, it won't hurt you. Woo! When you go through the water, you will not drink. You know why? Because there is a God that says, whatever you need, that's what I'll give. Hallelujah. There is a God that says, I'll make all grace abound to you. There is a God that said, I'll provide everything that you need by my riches and my glory of Christ Jesus. Do you understand what the devil meant for evil? God will make it good. Turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around. Hallelujah. Just when you thought it was over, God shows up. Somebody's going to praise him, but you're worried about Don't worry about the COVID. Don't worry about the mass. Praise him. Praise him. Let everything that had bread, praise him. Come on, praise him in this house. God will take care of us. There ain't no COVID going to be spread right now. You know why the glory of the Lord is coming in this house right now. Praise him in this house. Hallelujah. He even creates special things to provide for, our, for the shelter. The juniper tree, the cypress tree, that don't normally grow in the desert. They can't. Until God says, you grow that. That's right. <laughs> you can't grow in COVID until God says, you grow in the midst That's of it. Right. You grow spiritually right in the midst. Some of you have grown spiritually right in the midst of this pandemic. Yeah. You're closer to God than it wasn't it worth the battle. Yes. If you're closer to God than you were six months ago, you might have been through hell on earth, but thank God there's a God that has brought you through, and some of you are closer today than you've ever been. Thank God for that time. Thank God that God brought you to Don't you know, Paul said nothing, nothing can separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, I can preach that this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Those that are shouting hallelujah online this morning. Love you, God. I forget about you sometimes, but I'm with you. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is the poor and needy, not the proud and the arrogant that see and recognize the hand of God. You know, the one thing you need to, you need to hear is that God hates proud people. Amen. I don't care if you're president or you're poor. You better get off your high horse. Humble yourself Amen. under the mighty hand of the Lord that the yes. Lord may lift you up. Yes. Yes. The proud and the arrogant are going to be brought down one of these things. Now look at verses 21 through 29. This is the futility of anything but God. Everything you have in your life but God can go away in a short amount of time. One day it will all go away. The only thing that will stand in your life is your relationship with Jesus Christ and the word of our God that will stand when the world's on. Not one jot, not one tip will pass away from God's holy word. Your hope and your strength is found in your relationship with Jesus Christ who loved you died for you and gave himself for you. It's more valuable than any piece of jewelry that you have in your house. Amen. Protect it and guard it with everything that you have. Amen. You see, this is his case. And he says to those that are not trusting in him, fully trusting in God, he puts idolatry on trial. And he says to idolatry, present your case. The defendants are the idols. Of course, idols can't speak. You know why? You know why an idol can't speak? It's dumb. <laughs> dumb. Do you know what it means to be deaf and dumb? An idol is dumb. You can sit there and talk to him all day. We'll make you one. Here's me an idol right here. Speak! <laughs> Say something! Do something! Well, if that thing gets up and walks. <laughs> <laughs> Right? And that's what he's saying. And there are people that worship. They used to do more. You could bow down to this as well as you could bow down to a tree somewhere carved out with the images on it. Uh -huh. it this will do you as much good as worshiping Amazon, Apple, Twitter. This will do you as much good. I was going to put your money on me and I'll come back again. Yeah. Okay? I'm okay? Who said that? Thank you, brother. Amen. Listen to this. He said, I, I love verse 23. I'm going to give you this. Now, about down to you. I'll just relax. We're going to be good. About that. I'm going to be here forever. I'm going to have a prayer meeting back to the church. If everybody wants to stay and pray with me. I'm going to dismiss. I'm going to fuss here a few minutes. And I'm going to have a prayer meeting. If you want to stay, stay with me. Pray for me. I might pray five minutes. I might pray ten minutes. I don't know. But God, I just felt told everybody. I said, I, I'm going to dismiss. And I'm going to have a little prayer meeting. But if you want to stay, you're welcome. That's my thing. Verse 23. Look at this. He says in verse 23, he says to them, declare the things that are going to come. Declare what's ahead or backwards that we may know that you're God. Do good or do evil. Do, you know what he's saying? Do something. Do something. We were watching an old video in our house and oh remember everybody when the big cameras come out you look like you were a newsman <laughs> Christmas 1999 <laughs> oh yeah I wanted a big this Calvin Nunn reported from the Nunn household Christmas 1999 Brock was a, 11 and Candace was 6 sitting on the couch <laughs> We were over, yes, over in the uh, old parsonage. And Mark Brock opened up his stuff and, you know, and just la, 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 you know. And, and we got everything. We didn't even know this until we watched this the other day. I didn't know I was going to use it. It was for God is so good. He made me watch this Christmas video from 1999 so I could demonstrate this point to you. It was, and almost all the gifts are open until finally Brock gets his big gift. And we've got the, cam uh, the camera's actually been on a tripod, so it ain't moving a whole lot, you know. You, can, you know how that, yep. Uh, yeah. 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 Where's anybody yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not like it, was it? But anyway, he's trying to open He's got this box. And he's trying to open it, right? You ought to see, you ought to see, well, I'll show it to you. You ought to see what his clothes, what he's got on. <laughs> uh, 
retro baby, come on. Uh, and he's trying to get this box open. Of course, Candace is there, and I'm there. Uh, Barry is there, and I'm there, and we're just we're back off camera somewhere. He can't get this box open. We didn't even know this happened. He's trying to get that box open. You know what he look? He looks at. Well, are you just going to stand there and do nothing? <laughs> <laughs> it's the funniest thing you ever said. It's like I think he's saying it to me. Are you just going to stand there and what? Are you going to help? That's what an idol is. Are you just going to stand there and do nothing? You know what an idol does? You know why? It can't hear you. Speak a little loud. It can't say that. It can't help you open that box. An idol can't satisfy your life. An idol can't give you a better job. An idol can't heal you if you get COVID. An idol can't comfort you if you're down. But oh, I know a God who's not a deaf and dumb eye. I know a God that's got feet and got head and got ears and got a mouth and got eyes. Hallelujah. That whenever you say God, he says, yeah, I'm right here. I've been waiting on you. I'm going to help you get that box open. I'm going to help you get rid of that sickness. I'm going to help you overcome that fear. I'm going to help you through every trial and everything that goes in your life because I am God. You never have to say to him, are you going to stand there and do nothing? Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. They don't know nothing. The verdict is in. The verdict is in. God is calling one from the north. Cyrus, you'll come. In one night, they will turn down to Babylon. You can read that in Daniel. And Babylon will fall. Persia will take over. And Cyrus will go back for no other reason. Go and say to the people, the captives, y'all want to go home? Whew. I believe God will, Jesus will one day peek over the balconies of heaven. He'll say, y'all want to come home? Yes, Lord. Oh, y'all want to come home? Yes. Are you tired of that life down there? Yes. Hallelujah. I, I don't know, where's Jane? I don't know, Sister Jane, if that's the way it is, but maybe God picked over the the portals of heaven a couple of weeks ago and saw your dad and say, hey, you want to come on home? Yeah. Hallelujah. You know what? Paul said to be absent of bodies to be present with the Lord. Yeah. Yeah, as a matter of fact, he said, I, I, I have this, I, I'm in a quandary. I'm praying to rock a hard place. Yes. He said, I'd like to stay here for you. That's been a for, beneficial for you if I stay here. But he said, I'd rather go and be with the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Jesus is going to one day say, that's what Cyrus did. And the Jews went back. Some of them didn't begin to rebuild. Ezra 1 and 1 will tell you that. No, no reason for it. Here's the verdict. The verdict. About done. Here's the verdict. The verdict. May I have the verdict, please? Where's the uh, dead jury? Chair. Verdict is in. Idols, the hope of God. Here's a verdict. All idols are false. Yep. Amen. They're not really. They're not real. They're nothing. Uh -huh. Don't tell you the truth. How many people did you know said, well, if I pastor, I need a better, I'm going to have to start working a job. I've got to make more money. i got to get a bigger house. I give it. And, and I'm really going to feel good when I get here. And now they're there. And they got all this stuff. And, they, and they're empty on the inside. All idols are false. Yes. What they promise you, they cannot deliver. Yeah. Yes. All idols are worthless. Let me ask you something. If an idol can speak, talk, do anything, who's, who's going to buy it? And you know what something is worth? If you've got a car, you know what that car's worth? Don't go on uh, NADA. That car's only worth what somebody gave you for. Did you know that? Look. I might tell you I got a knife and my pocket's worth $500, but nobody give me $500. If all I get is $10 out of it, you know what it's worth? You know what idols are worth? Zero. Idol worship and works are wind and emptiness and absolutely worthless. You can trust in idols who can benefit you nothing, or you can trust in the one who will freely give you all things. Amen. If you read this chapter real close, you'll find this in verse 10. God says, I will strengthen you. I will uphold you with my right hand. Verses 10, 13, and 14, he says, I will help you. 
Verses 14 and 15. Remember him talking about Jacob like a worm? How many of you are afraid of a worm? Felt like he said, I'm gonna make you like a claw, like a, a big, you see these things that claw these trees down? That's what it said. God, you know, in other words, God's saying, I'm gonna do something miraculous in your life. Amen. You might feel like a worm this morning, but you let the Holy Spirit empower you. And you'll run rough shot over the enemies of your life. Amen. Verse 18, he says, I will open rivers in desolate places of your life. And he will make a wilderness a pool of refreshing water. Verse 19, he will plant the trees. Verse 27, he will give the messenger. The false idols can give nothing. But God will give a messenger a good news. Stand this morning. You remember when Jesus was born in Bethlehem? You remember the message? Or tonight, he was born to you in the city of David, a Savior. Is Christ the Lord? The good news. The good news. To know God and to confide in Him is to be invincible. To know God and to confide in Him is to be invincible. You, if you put your faith and trust in God, you cannot lose. Amen. You will not lose. You are invincible. No one can really injure one whose confidence is in the Lord. Amen. Why? The Lord will cause all that seems to be evil to work for good of those who put their trust in Him. I'm going to tell you, when this stuff in America is all over, you're going to see the kingdom of God on display like you have never seen it before. Amen. Amen. I believe millions and millions and millions are going to come to Jesus Christ Amen. after this is over. So if it's fear, so it is fear. Is it not true? Then it is fear that is the deadly enemy of the heart. The only thing we have to fear is what? That's exactly right. Yes. The only thing you have to fear is fear. But I will not be overcome by fear. You know what the Bible says? Perfect love cast out fear. Cast it away. That's the way you overcome fear. Look. And, and I, we, we, we're about to. Old Brother Joe and Sister Kamala or Kamala or Camila or whatever they call it. They got a lot of stuff I don't like, right? They got a lot. They got. They bring back old people. They're not good. They're going to try their best to make a socialist, communist nation out of this country. I'll tell you one thing: they're not going to do. They're not going to put bitterness and hatred in my heart toward them. Yeah. I will not allow it. That's right. Kyle, I will not allow that. I'm not going to get on Facebook and, and say stupid stuff and look like I'm a person. I'm not going to do what went on in Washington. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Okay? No. No. If those people, if everybody, if every, if the Christians stayed home on Wednesday, there might have been a different different outcome. Think about it. Congress was doing what they said they was going to do. And guess what? The I told everybody this. You might not know this. In, it's in the Bible. But Jesus said that the children of the darkness are wiser than the children of light. And the darkness Run the children of light to Washington and overcome it on Wednesday. Antifa should they should have stayed home. See, they knew that was going to happen. That's my political statement. If they just stayed home, it might have been different because they had already challenged the vote in Arizona. Think about it. Think about it. Listen. In due time, God will deal with those who seek to injure his people. So I'm not going to let Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff Bezos, the scrambling guy on Twitter with a beard. I don't know his name. I, I'm not going to hate you. I will not hate you because I'm not going to miss heaven because uh, if this country becomes communist, socialist, yeah. and, and everything that we've held dear in our heart, 
I am not going to get mad, bitter, and ugly at nobody. We can't afford, we're too near the end, Sister Thurman. We're almost home, but the devil would like nothing more than to put hatred in your heart for the Democrat or a liberal or somebody. Did you know that? This is the way that men will know that you are mine. If you have love one for another, saith the Lord. Love is my chaste virtue. I give you love in your heart, not only for those close to you, but for those who would hate you and try to take away what you know is good for you. And I call on you to be a loving people. Love. Put my love in your heart and share my love with those around you, Seth. If you receive that message, just lift your hands and say, Lord, I receive that message. Just for you. Help us love. Hallelujah. Help us Hallelujah. I feel the presence of the Lord. This is, this is Holy Spirit time now. It's not my time. I'm not That's why, Brother Frank, that we can have a calm assurance this morning. Oh, wish I could sing. That's why that blind lady can say, blessed assurance. Yes. Jesus is mine. Hallelujah. Oh, what a foretaste of glory. Lord. Hallelujah. Woo, of glory. You know what she's saying? What you feel in your heart, what Jesus put you in, it's only a little bit of what heaven's going to feel like. Fanny Crosby, that's what she said. She said, I'm an heir of salvation. I've been purchased by God. Hallelujah. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. Yes. Karen? Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Ooh. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I don't know about you, but I needed this this morning. I needed it. Let me let, let just have a little longer service. This is where we're at. <laughs> I've been here 30 years in Saudi days. I'm 61 years old. And I've heard the, the voice of the enemy say over the last few weeks, you had your day. That's all he said. Give me. You had your day. 2007, 2005, you had your day. You can't. You don't have it anymore. What's it? You don't have it. Did you? If you can hang on until you get old enough to retire. So many to leave last year. Now I want to tell you something. I have not done anything. I've not done anything to make this church what it is or what it was in its prime day. All I'm gonna, here's all I'm going to promise you. I'm going to show up here every Sunday morning prepared to preach the word of God. Amen. I'm going to spend time during the week in prayer and study. If you get sick, I'm going to pray for you. If I can, come visit you. I'll, I'll be here. If I, if, if I can, I can't. If somebody dies, I'm going to come and help you bury your dead, even if it means driving to God's beautiful place. Beverly and I are not going to get mad at you if you tell us something. We're not going to get mad at you if you leave. We're not going to feel hard at you no matter. We're just going to show up and end the event. If you like that, and you want to be a part of that, whether it's 50 or 100, but I can't do anything. I can't, I don't have a faucet where I can turn on a revival and move of God. But
Believe me if I could, I'd go off the water for that. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to, I'm going to preach you the word of God. And I'm going to love you with all my heart. And spend time with God. No matter what happens. Okay? I'm not leaving unless you want me to stay. Come on. Let all of you that want to pray with me, your name. Y'all be like pray with us. If you're going to bind with us and say, Brother Nunley, I'm going to bind with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'll. Look, if we can eat cake together, sometimes we got to get in the ditch together. Brother Shane, we got to we got to work together. And I'd rather know. Now I'm not. I'm not asking for anything other than Brother Nunley. I'll show up do the best thing. I'll pick my guitar the best I can for the nun. I'll sing the best I can in the Father, Father, bless this church. This we're so kind. And so faithful, God. And Lord, you know what we fight, what we go against, what we battle against. But I want to tell you something. I, I can't go on like I've been going for the last few weeks. Do you like keep going the way I've been going for the last few weeks? The war in my soul, Brother Eric. When Kim sent me that message the other day, it was, oh, it was, it was a pool of water in the kids. I keep going like that. And here's what I'm saying. I'm not going to worry about how many come to this church. I'm going to do my best. Not. I sure don't want to run nobody out. I don't want nobody leaving hating me. Okay? I don't want that. I'm friends with the ones that have left. As far as I know, we're all friends. So I can't tell you, God's going to build this church this year. And there's going to be 200 more people to come in. There's going to be, this is going to happen. Gonna happen. I, I can't, I, I, I can't. And I'll do my best to love God and be faithful to God. Amen. And I'll do my best to, to hear his voice. Brother Robbie, I'll do my best. My best. And I promise you that I won't just ride out, ride out till retire. Just hold on to Jesus. If you and I are going to be together, we're going to go together. Let's just go with every bit of the seal. I, I believe people gave their service. And I, I thought about I said, God. When we meet with Tracy and some leaders next week, I want the best. These children deserve the best children's church we can give them. Yeah. Amen. We may not can give them what you what they would get in at, at Joel Osteen's church. We these young these youth deserve the best we can give them, brother Aaron. Yeah. And they may be you look out and you see great places to all we can do is what we're gifted to do. Okay. We're going, to, we're going to give you the best that we can give you. We're going to love God together. Pray together. If there's, if you can help us, we accept your help. If there's something that we're doing that we can do better with or let me, let me just show this. I'm not going to show this, but I am, so I'm here, so I'm going to share it and go on. This is our part. I have been at hospitals when babies were born. I put them, I've helped them get in our nursery, our children's church, a youth program, and in this church. I've raised them and for whatever reason. They left me. That's my biggest concern. 
to my back again. Because I don't want Charlie to grow up here when Charlie gets 23, 24 years old. Or your your grandchildren, Orbit, and Crimson, and Annie. And, well, that's my grandchildren. And if there's something that we need to do, Brother Jonathan, with that age group, if God has shown me what to do, I'll do it. I'll help you to do it. Okay? That's been the most, I'll be honest with you, that's been the most frustrating thing probably for the last 10 or 15 years. It's not that people that we have raised in this church have gone out and done stupid things. Some of them have just gone to other places and they serve God faithfully. There. If that's what God wants, I'll, I'll accept that. I mean, I'll, you know what I mean? But boy, I'd sure like to see God bless these kids and them grow up and I look out one day and they're singing. And they're doing music. And they're teaching. And they're preaching. And they're praising God. And to know that they can do it right here. Would you help us? Pray with us. God will show us the way. I mean, let me ask you this. Hey, this is our prayer. How many of you, boys, you know that it's going to be tough when you hear stuff going on in the government. They, they've done this or that. How many of you are going to say, Pastor, I'm going to do my best to love. This. I'm going to do my best to love the people in each other. I'm not going to let hatred. I'm not going to. Get on Facebook and embarrass yourself. I think I lost a friend yesterday. I didn't think I did anything much, but it don't matter much. Like yeah. Father, lead us. Father, guide us. Help us. You said you would. This is Psalm or Isaiah 41. Keep your hand upon us. Help us to pray together. To love one another. To cherish what we have. To take the good and make it better. Something is lacking, show it to us. So that we can help. Give us great people that will lead our children, our youth, our young couples. I thank you, God, for all the talent and the People that you have put here. I'm, I'm, I'm amazed. And I'm encouraged this morning. I give you praise and glory and honor. Anybody want to pray for us this morning? You want to come and get a mic? You want to pray for us? Or you want to say something this morning? Beverly and I have a book of your prayer requests. We're, where's that? Yep, see that one right there? That's right scripture. Hallelujah. If you give him a prayer request, that boy will pray over here. Amen. Right Amen. Now write it in. And it won't be. Okay. We've got yeah, Dean and Judy and Slick that are sick. Your mom is sick. Yes, give
Right. Yeah. Amen. Uh, Sister Lawrence, is your first Sunday back? Amen. Look over there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's a miracle. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Yes.